This video is meant to follow my Basic 10 indirect derivation video. This one will focus on the conditional derivation and represents the third and final derivation type that you should know for solving sentential derivations. So to recap, the first one is the direct derivation, the second one is the indirect derivation, and the third one is the conditional derivation. In a conditional derivation, this really only comes up when what we are asking ourselves to show is in fact a conditional statement. So here's a conditional statement, and I want to show that this conditional follows from the truth of R and not S. I always start with my show line. Show bracket negation S arrow negation R or P arrow P or Q. Now, whenever you write a show line, you always need to do the show line breakdown. And the way the show line breakdown works is you always ask what the main connective of the show line is. I've already figured it out. It's this conditional. If the main connective is a conditional, you do show line breakdown. And what you do first is you assume CD and then you show the consequent. So you want to assume the antecedent and show the consequent. This is a hypothetical proof. This is a, a a conditional derivation, and in philosophy we do this all the time. Uh, if I want to prove that uh, if God exists there's no free will, I assume God exists and then show that from that assumption there must be no free will, and I do the exact same thing here. So I get to assume for free that the antecedent is true. Negation s arrow negation r or p, and I'm going to code that as a c d or for logic 2010, it's ASSCD for assume CD. And immediately after, I want to write show the consequent. And the consequent is P or Q. Now, don't stop there. What show line breakdown says is whenever you write a show line, you immediately want to ask, what's the main connective? Is it a conditional? Well, the answer is no, it's not a conditional. It's at this disjunction. So if it's not a conditional, show line breakdown says immediately start and assume ID. You just never know when you're going to need it to solve the problem. And if you don't know, you better just put it in just in case. Okay, so I've done my show line breakdown. You always know show line breakdown is complete when you, because you finish every time with an AID or an assume ID. If you didn't get to the assume ID, you didn't finish your show line breakdown. And you really, really want to master show line breakdown before you move on anywhere else. Now that I've done that, I'm going to analyze my premise. I only have one premise here, and the main connective is an AND. That's nice and easy. We've done this several times already now. I immediately just simplify that both ways. So I get R and I get negation S, and that's premise 1 simplify, premise 1 simplify. Okay. So what can I do now? Well, I'm going to highlight any main connectives that are sitting around. So here's a main connective of the conditional. And I also have this line here, but the main connective is a negation, which isn't the most useful. In fact, that actually represents sort of something special, which uh, I will go over in a future video. But it turns out I actually don't need it for this derivation, so I'm not going to worry too much. So when I look at line 2, it's a conditional. And so that always means I'm looking for the antecedent or the negation of the consequent. Well, I don't have negation bracket negation R or P, but I certainly do have the antecedent. And so I can just color it just so, you know, I know what I'm looking at. And so modus ponens says, if I have the antecedent, I can infer the truth of the consequent. So I immediately get negation R or P. So that is line two, line six, two, six, modus ponens. Okay, that's good. That took care of my line two. Uh, now I look at this. The main connective of this is the disjunction. Disjunction is MTP. That's the elimination rule. If not one, then the other. And I've seen this trick before. I know line five is R and line seven, the left disjunct is negation R. So I know that I have to double negate the R. I hope you didn't forget. So I know that I can take line five. I can double negate it. And then I'll take line seven and modus to lend opponents. And then the result of all that is just P. So that's really nice. OK, at this point, I've done all my automatic moves. I just need to ask, what do I do with this P? Always operate on your most recent show line. So my goal right now is not line 1. It is, in fact, line 3. 
I want to show P or Q. Unfortunately, right now, I've just got P. So what does that mean? Well, I'm actually close. P or Q is a disjunction. And to build a disjunction, the disjunction introduction rule is addition. So I'm going to use addition to build this up. Because addition says if you have one side, well, you can actually just add anything you want to it. So I just get P or Q immediately. That's line 8, addition. And that gets me exactly what I want. Now you have two options for closing this. You can actually just immediately say direct derivation because P or Q is what I wanted. Or if you had preferred, you could have actually said, hey, this 8 addition line, which is P or Q, contradicts with line 4. So I could have also said, hey, if you look at 4, it IDs. So this DD could be replaced with this 4 ID and it would be correct. I'm going to stick with the DD for now. Once you write a closing condition, like direct derivation or indirect derivation, you know that you have solved what you wanted, and what you wanted is your most recent show line. What this means is that lines 4 through 9 were used to show P or Q, and we can no longer use lines 4 through 9. They are in a subderivation that is boxed, which means they're under a different set of assumptions, and we can't use them in our main argument. But we're not worried. We look back at the current show line, and the current show line is show this conditional. Now, knowing that, I know that I assumed the antecedent, and my goal was to show that the consequent follows from the assumption of the antecedent. Well, does it? Yes, it does follow because I proved P or Q. This show isn't there anymore, so it just says P or Q, um, and that is the consequent up here. So I have shown that under the assumption of the antecedent, the consequent follows, so to finish this derivation, I just say, on line 3, I can complete a conditional derivation because I've shown that the consequent follows from the assumption of the antecedent. So that's all I need to do, and I box and close everything that allowed me to show this conditional. And that is the end of the proof. So that's how a conditional derivation works. Remember to assume the conditional and show the consequent. And always remember to finish your show line breakdown, add in that assume ID. It wasn't critical here, but in other derivations you will need it. And the way you end a conditional derivation is you cite the consequent line that you proved, and then you can close the full conditional line. This is a nice example because I have the option of doing a DD or ID as well as a CD mixed in.